everybody and welcome back. This is part 48 now of our Trumpeter 1200 scale hood build. Uh, nearly at the end now. As I said last time, I'm hoping to finish in the uh, 50 episodes that I've planned for this build. Uh, and in this video, I'm going to finish off the forecastle deck. So get the railings on, all the anchor gear, and there's one or two other bits and pieces of equipment to uh, build up and fit. The first thing I'm going to do is build the paravanes, which actually fit onto the bridge sides down at the bottom here. So uh, that's the first job over at the bench. We'll get over and get those paravanes built up uh, and then we'll get the rest of the stuff fitted back here at the ship. OK, so these are the instructions for the paravanes. We need to build two and these are stowed uh, one on each side of the lower bridge base. Uh, and I'm also going to build, uh, whilst we're at the bench, I'm going to build the paravane booms. Pontos give us the option to build these either deployed uh, or stowed. And just for a bit of interest, I'm going to do one of each. Uh, the sort of active side of the model, uh, the side that I'm going to view it from, is the port side. So I'll uh, fit the deployed uh, boom to the port side and the stowed one on the starboard side. Uh, and the two paravanes themselves, as I said, go on the bridge base. The function of these was quite interesting. They were developed during the First World War and they were initially designed uh, to cut the cables on uh, anti-shipping mines. So they had a kind of a wing fitted to them which glided through the water. They were deployed over the side of the ship and they glided through the water on a cable which uh, pulled the mine, if it was engaged, pulled the mine to the surface uh, and it could be destroyed by gunfire on the surface. But later on, these were fitted with a warhead. They look a bit like a torpedo uh, and they could be used for anti-submarine uh, engagements. I don't know how successful they were in that role, but uh, anyway, that's what they were capable of doing. So we'll get the parts for the paravanes, we'll do those first and then the booms should be an easy enough job to put together. We're getting to the end of our turned brass parts now, there's not too many left. Pontos give us parts for four, but as far as I'm aware the ship only carried two, as I said on the bridge base. And the other parts that we need are these little pieces of brass here. Just come in a little bit so we can see these a bit better. The majority of the brass parts are on uh, fret 5 which is the funnel fret so you've, uh, if you've got the spare funnel fret you're going to have some spares for this assembly. I'll get all the brass parts off, then we can see where to go from there. We don't need all these parts. These here, although they're in the instructions, they're to allow you to deploy the paravane on the deck so next to one of the hoists as though it's about to be used uh, but I'm not going to do that I'm going to put mine on the bridge so both of mine are going to be stowed so we don't need those parts so having struggled trying to work these out I managed to find a photograph of this paravane stowed on the hood's bulkhead and Actually, it looks nothing like this uh, arrangement here that Pontos have illustrated just at the drop of the hat. They've built the assembly in one way up here and then all of a sudden we get a photograph down here of what looks to be a stowed paravane, but it's not. I don't know what that's supposed to be. Uh, but this is the correct arrangement here. This is what we're looking for. So the paravane sat at an angle with this arrangement at the bottom at a sort of uh, 45 degree angle to the bulkhead. So that's how we'll make these up. So this is the 
uh, first one that I've built up just to show you what we're aiming for and I got to this point after an awful lot of trial and error uh, the Pontos instructions uh, don't explain that actually you need to make a mirror image of that for the other side because as you can see what happens is when these are stowed on the vertical uh, bulkhead of the bridge base they lean in at an angle like that so obviously that's uh, for the port side uh, the starboard one needs to have the opposite lean but Pontos don't uh, tell us that so you could just make two up like that and then they'd look very strange when you fitted them to the opposing side uh, so that took a lot of working out how to get there and I'll uh, build the second one or I'll try and build the second one on camera just to show you how I went about it the first thing we do is fit this ring to the back and it's pretty insignificant I don't think it matters at all if you didn't fit this you're not going to notice it really and that just slots on the back like that then the next thing we need to do is fold this piece up so this is the bracket which fits on the underside here so you don't actually see that much of it when the whole assembly is finished and this locates onto this what I think of as a base plate really and you can see there are two slots in there or two markings in the etching and they're for the feet of this bracket so we'll just bend those feet up a little bit so it's like a little flange at the back uh, and on the bottom of the feet to just bend those up a little bit and then the sides come down through probably getting on for 45 degrees something like that but we need to judge it against the distance uh, on the base plate so just bend those until they're going to sit nicely on the base plate like that now this is supposed to fold underneath but I just found that it completely obstructed the fit of the paravane body so and you can't see it anyway it's completely invisible so I just break that off and then there's a tiny little fork which comes over the top like that and just bends down and that can go on to the base plate at this stage this v-shaped arm just needs to come up a little bit we'll see in a minute why the next thing i want to do is get these uh, bullets uh, at the end i think there must have been maybe floats or something like that i'm not absolutely certain what the function of them was and amazingly there's a slot in that we're never going to pick it up on the camera but Pontos have got a little slot which fits uh, onto the end of the base plate you can see it there on this particular one and what I did with the first two was to try and find the slot and just open it up a little bit just with a knife blade just makes it easier to locate How on earth you cut a slot into a piece of brass like that I don't know it's uh, amazing but they've managed it and if we can see the slot and I can't at the minute amazingly that slots onto the end of the base plate like that really that's an incredible piece of engineering 
to get that slot into there so that it fits on the end of that base plate. It's amazing. The next part is this front frame. So that is this part here at the front wraps around the nose of the paravane and it clips to uh, both the base plate and this top bracket. The difficult thing with these is to be able to bend it because it's so thin. It must be a while since you've heard the sheep on these videos. They've been in a field, a few fields away. So I've had some peace and quiet for a couple of weeks. But um, they're back now. You'll be able to hear them now and again on the audio. Just squeeze that together. This is quite a tricky part to fit because the front v-shaped brace here has to go on the inside and the front of the brace goes right in the front of this little bracket so it has to fit in like that and the best thing to do i think is to just locate the bottom first of all So these have got little forks that grip the base plate and a little slot so hopefully that will stay in position. Just let that dry for a second before I try and uh, do anything else with it. So you can see it's in position there at the bottom in the middle of the base plate. Then the top slots into the top of the top bracket and really I just need a bit of glue on that to hold it in position just while I adjust it so that's how we want it Very, very delicate. It's hardly, we can hardly pick it up. Just make sure everything's in line like that. And then just put a tiny dab of extra thin on the front. So that's how it should look from the side. And into that, we then push the paravane itself. With this, we want to make sure that there's a flat on the back of the paravane on the tail here. And that faces downwards, and that's for the, well, it's a tail plane really, on the bottom. So we have to make sure that that goes downwards. And I'll just fix that in position with just a spot of thick super glue on the underside of the plate. And just in the very forward part of the brace. So just look for that flat. And just make sure it's nice and centralised. And we're actually going to view this from underneath. So that's how the part fits up against the bulkhead. As I said, that's the port one. Need to make the bulkhead bracket now. The bulkhead bracket, so 
this part here on the underside consists of three parts the main section or cradle is this one so that just folds up like that and just we just have to be careful here to get the correct orientation for this so just lining up our port side paravane so we want this one to fit like that so we get that mirror image and what happens is uh, these end pieces fit over the top and sort of lock the lock the paravane body into place so just a couple of tabs so they form uh, a complete loop for the paravane body to slide through like that and I've glued these together first on the first assembly whether or not that's a good idea I'm not sure I have managed to get the paravane body through doing it like this but I couldn't guarantee it if you're doing this yourself so we end up with a complete loop basically I'll put the paravane through that first of all obviously before I put the tail piece on and then bend the rear bracket up so again that's at the opposing angle so we've got two mirror image paravanes for the bulkheads just fold the tail piece up now So this is just like an aeroplane really, it's got um, a fin and a couple of stabilizers. And that just fits onto the flat at the back of the paravane on here. So those, after a lot of fiddling around and a lot of detective work, are the two bulkhead paravanes. These are the uh, parts, or a few of the parts for the paravane boom, the deployed one. Uh, so this is the main stem. This is the base bracket, which has to uh, be bent. That's just a basically a U shape that fixes to the base. So it's basically the bracket that the main boom fits onto down at the bottom. So that's the bracket. The arrangement of this is basically uh, it's quite simple really. There's the post and then the boom slots in down here. And there's some rig to go on the top. There must be a hole in the base of this. Yes, there is. And that accepts the bracket on the end of the boom. And that has folds on it as well. So that simply uh, slots in like that. I'll just try a bit of glue on that, see if I can get it. It's in a nice position. So that's uh, pretty secure. You might remember a while ago when I built the 40 foot derricks that we had these little brackets. They were a bit bigger on the 40 foot derrick, these are tiny. And uh, that just goes over the end like that. And we'll fix the tackle to that. 
and there are two of these this one's got uh, four loops on it and then the tackle itself just hooks onto that and that's all there is with a hook at either end that goes through these uh, brackets that we've just fitted so I'll hook the front onto one of these loops I've not glued any of this yet I'll get the tackle in place first and then I'll glue it all up I think I've got something on that, I'm not sure. It's uh, hard to tell. When I come to fit this to the deck, we have these two supports. Uh, so it's basically a tripod arrangement at the back. Something like that. We'll have to drill a couple of little holes in the deck to accept those. So that's a nice little detail, I like those. I'm doing all the preparation for the railing parts here. These are the platforms at the top of the ladders which go from the forecastle deck up to the shelter deck. And you've just got to be careful with these to get them orientated correctly. Obviously the mirror images of each other, one goes Part one on starboard. Because this is one of those parts where you're not going to get a second chance to bend it. It's one of those get it right first time jobs. These braces obviously uh, fold back towards the bulkhead uh, and just support the platform. These are the ladders which accompany these platforms. So obviously we've done lots of these before on the ship. They're easy enough to bend. This part was uh, the leadsman's platform. We've just got a couple of little flanges that bend down on the sides. If I can get hold of them. A part like that is where these uh, Tamiya pliers come into their own really because they're so uh, sharp, the jaws, that you can grab hold of that tiny little part and bend it the way you want it. Obviously the rest just folds up, it's quite simple. Thick CA is good for parts like this uh, because you just manage to get a blob on there before the uh, glue evaporates. These couple of parts here have uh, been off the ship for a while. They got fitted in probably part two or three, but they were far too exposed. So I took them off. And what they are is, uh, they are brackets which held the degaussing coil as the degaussing coil rose over the hose pipes. So this goes on the side of the hull and lifts the degaussing coil up and over uh, but 
I couldn't fit them at that stage really, or at least I tried, but I ended up taking them off and I just cut the degaussing coil at this point fore and aft uh, with a view to fitting them again now. And what they need is this flange, which fits along the top and also a number of brackets which fit along the back face here. So again, I can get these ready <coughs> and get them fitted to the ship. Once they've been painted, I'll paint all these first. They can be touched up again once I've got them fitted. These flanges on bulkheads and splinter shields and so on are very difficult to fit just because they've got such a small contact point on them. And the best thing to do is to try and get them a little bit at a time rather than trying to attach the whole thing. So that's the flange fitted along the top. And I can put the brackets on the back now. There are two sizes for these. So that's uh, ready to paint and fit. Nearly there with all these foxhole parts. Fortunately, Pontos give us a spare of this tiny bracket, the smaller of the two, because I've just dropped one on the floor and I can't be bothered to get on my hands and knees and find it. So that's a welcome addition. These little parts here, these brackets, I've made from strip styrene and there to replace uh, some resin parts from the Pontos set which I've misplaced. I don't know what I've done with them. I've looked all over for them and I can't find them. Uh, you'll be able to see them better there with that shot and I've just drilled a hole through them. Uh, they're part of what were called I think Devil's Claws or Devil's Fingers and they had a chain attached here secured at this end and a short chain that went forward with a hook on the end uh, that secured the main anchor chains we'll see how they go together when we come to fit them to the ship i've got all the railings uh, painted as well so they can all go on these are the parts that we need for the jack staff on the bow so a few bits of turned brass, uh, a few etch brass brackets and we need the trumpeter jack staff which is this part. We just need this bottom piece here and you can see the difference in size with those and the Pontos part's a lot more nicely detailed. It has the crown on top and presumably it's the correct length. So the first thing we'll do is take off this uh, piece at the bottom that we need. We don't need that, we can throw that away. And we need a half millimetre hole in the top of this to accept the staff. So I'll just mark the centre with a needle. Before we can fit this base, we've got to fit the brackets up the staff from the bottom, starting with this one. The 
the next one is this one so they're all different shapes you've got to just be careful to get the right one and with those brackets in place not glued yet but in place I'll glue the staff to the trumpet apart down at the bottom and just make sure to get that nice and square just so that the staff stands upright and this piece here just backs the staff up so I'm just going to glue that onto that bottom bracket to start with and then we align it with the top bracket here I'm just going to fix that with a bit of CA this small turned brass part I think is a lamp of some sort which we need to fit on the front here there's a hole at the front of this bracket these are the rear stays and we just need to fold up these little brackets here which go on the bottom uh, I think what I'll do is fit the brackets to the bottom first because until I get this fitted to the ship these back braces won't have a lot of strength they'll tend to want to wobble around a little bit so this is the plan to fit this jack staff so I've painted the bottom half where the part fits onto the ship both the staff and these back stays and that will enable me to get a nice neat colour demarcation down at the bottom so I can't mask around that really uh, and then once it's all installed I'll just go in with the airbrush and paint the rest of the part and touch it all in so uh, that's the plan we'll give it a go back over at the ship okay we're over at the ship as you can see and the first thing to get sorted out are the paravanes which go here uh, on the bridge base and just below the paravane was a number six reel one of these very small reels which went down at the bottom here I didn't uh, make these earlier on in the video, they've been in storage for quite a while. And then the paravan sits just above that in this sort of position. The next thing is to fit the railing around the forward shelter deck here and the ladders which go down to the forecastle. So we'll start with this railing here. That will give us the position for the uh, ladders. And I just use some thick super glue for railings. Just a very thin bead run along the bottom and I will go along this when it's perfectly dry with the airbrush just to get rid of any spots of glue and this butts up against the shield this forward UP shield so I'll add a little glue to the end stanchion as well This one here has the angle obviously to fit around the front of the shelter deck. 
this is the platform here for the ladders it'll help just putting a bit of glue on that end stanchion it'll just support the platform hopefully support arms or legs here uh, I'll bend those into shape once the platform set I'll just check the fit of the actual ladder and with this I just apply some glue right onto the top there's a little location point just at the top of these Pontos ladders which just allows it to rest on the platform I don't apply any glue to the base I don't want to get any glue on the deck that's a nice fit actually it's gone on all right is that the ladder on the port side uh, was the uh, ladder down which uh, one of the survivors, Bob Tilburn, made his escape. Bob Tilburn was a crew member of the guns on the shelter deck. And when it became obvious that the ship was going down, he made his way down this gangway on the port side and was swept overboard, more or less around this point, because of the sea uh, overtaking the ship. Uh, it must have been a terrifying uh, experience for the three that uh, got off, not to mention the crew that didn't escape. Now that this is set, I can just bend these arms back a little bit. And I'm not going to attempt to glue these to the bulkhead. All that will do is get glue on the bulkhead, which I don't want to risk. Okay, it's time to uh, fit the anchors now. So I've got the horse pipes drilled out, as you saw. I did that right at the beginning, I think probably in episode one or two. Um, the horse pipe openings that I made are a bit too narrow for these shackles which go on the top. So I'll glue those in now from above. So with the actual anchor chain, I will cheat a little bit here. Just make sure I've got enough. And I want to just open up the end eyelet. That's just slightly over scale, the shackle. But it looks all right. And I've just had to open up the end link on the anchor chain and just let that set for a moment. So be careful handling this chain, we don't want to snag it. And then all I'm going to do is drop it down into its receptacle at the front. Again, there'll be a proper name for that. Just to make sure that that doesn't move around at all, I'm just going to put a spot of super glue on the inboard side as it goes around the capstan and just leave that to rest I don't think it's possible to glue it really um, but I'm happy with that these anchor chains aren't strictly accurate and that's because on the actual ship the each link in the chain had a bar going across it 
And I think you can get that sort of uh, chain link in resin or maybe even 3D printed uh, accurate chain. But uh, I might replace them at some point if I manage to get hold of some of that. But I'm not too fussed about it at the moment. So I'll do the port side one now. I'll just touch up the top of these anchors. I'm just going to carefully remove the turrets. Uh, just so that I can fit the paravane boom. Which goes here. Just next to A turret and behind the forward breakwater. So that's the position that we want. So I just need to drill some holes. On the, on the starboard side, the paravane boom is just stowed on deck. And I think that's it for the actual on deck equipment and pieces. So I can now fit the railings uh, along this starboard side. You can see the detail on these railings, which is quite a bit more than the trumpeter parts, etch brass. We've got the tensioning uh, pieces here and the angled uprights, which aren't present on the trumpeter etch brass. So we'll get this into position now. And I'm just making a couple of little adjustments for a nice neat fit around the fair leads. So I've taken the bottom section out of the rail at this point so that it wraps around the fair lead. I think that you're meant to actually put these behind the fair lead, but I don't think that looks right. And I'm not going to glue all of this at once. I just want to do a little section at a time. So I'm going to do up to that fair lead first. I can do the next section now. Just be careful not to get the glue everywhere. That's a nice snug fit up to the deck edge. The deck edge, deck edge just supports that a little bit. These are obviously uh, extremely delicate. We're not going to be able to go anywhere near these parts now. And I'll just tuck those down behind that fair lead like that. So that's uh, nice and neat. Okay, we'll do the next section now, which will run, I think there are three sections along this uh, whole side at the front.
This front railing ended up a little bit too long. So I've just gone in and cut out a small section so I can fit it separately and get it exactly in the right place. You might remember I built these Leedsman's platforms and they fit here, just rest on the deck edge. I'll uh, fit all the port ones now and then we can just do a little bit of touch up along the edge. Just neaten it up and get rid of any little glue spots. But uh, we're nearly there with this folks all now. You might remember that earlier in the video I mentioned that I'd misplaced the Pontos resin parts. Uh, including uh, some things that were called Devil's Claws. Which were part of the anchor arrangement. These went on the slipways uh, to retain the anchor chains themselves. And Pontos provide these in resin. But of course I've gone and lost them. So I've had to make these up from pieces of uh, start. So I've had to make these up from pieces of brass tubing cut to shape or cut to length. A couple of brass etched brass hooks on the end and joined them together using some of the anchor chain links. So uh, painted black, they are a good replacement actually for the uh, resin parts. I think they'll look better than the resin. They are quite a bit finer doing them like that. The resin in the Pontos set isn't brilliant. So there were um, all sorts of uh, holes and air bubbles in it. Uh, not good at all. So I think they'll look better. So I'll get those painted black and we can fit them and then that'll be job done for the forecastle. Okay, we can fit the jack staff now, but first of all, I've got to just drill a couple of holes for the back stays. Okay, so that's it. We're all done for part 48 and the forecastle deck is completely finished now. Uh, in part 49 next week, I'll be finishing the quarter deck. So doing the railings and building the ensign staff for the stern of the ship. And I'll also uh, be finishing the port side hull because uh, you might remember a good few episodes ago when I was building the side barriers. I made provision for the accommodation ladders to be deployed on the port side and that's the side that I'll be viewing the model once it's in its uh, display case. So two accommodation ladders to fit and rig next week. Uh, just some final touching up here and there uh, and then the model will be done. In part 50 to follow that the following week I'll do a video just really consisting of a quick review of the model just looking back over the last nine months it'll be since I started this back last October uh, and lots of uh, close-up photographs of the completed build so that'll be something that I'm looking forward to uh, in a couple of weeks time when this will be done it's been a big project uh, and it'll be lovely to get it fitted in its display case so that's it for this one uh, I'll see you next week for that quarter deck and fitting these accommodation ladders so in the meantime, I'll leave you as usual with some detailed photographs of the forecastle deck work. Uh, and I'll see you in another seven days for part 49. So bye for now, everybody.